A Day in the Life of an Atlantean Citizen Housing When any member of the Order of Death awakens from their need for further rest and slumber, the world is improved and enlightened. They begin their waking lives by sitting up from a gloomy shroud of darkness inside an enclosed structure. This is their bedroom and their home. In the homes in the New Jerusalem, that is, the ascended city of Enoch in heaven, the minds of those whose bodies remained in sleep below arise into a realm of eternal clear bright light in the realms above and beyond all material reality. The walls of their homes are translucent stained glass, and their homes are all combinations of the same basic tessellated solids, leaving room between their modular hives for hallways, chutes, and ladders. These modular condominiums provide tensegrity for the structural integrity of large buildings to grow similarly to how the hexagonal cells of a quartz crystal propagate. Instead of stacking cubes on top of cubes and building upward, a single room with a certain number of sides of walls can metastasize into a building with an equal or derived number of wings, floors, rooms, etc., alike a common snowflake style of fractal. Because fractals propagate around the outer edges of strange attractors, there are large open spaces within and between the manifold of surrounding houses. Much like a menger sponge, the complete structure possesses nearly zero solid volume, but covers a maximum amount of area using empty space. Each room's shape corresponds to a pattern of tessellations determined by the number of sides of the floor and on the total number of walls. Many individual houses are based on the truncated octahedron's unfolded tiling pattern as their blueprint. Others are semi- or demi-regular tessellation patterns, combining multiple shapes and solid forms. The basic building blocks are the three prime polyhedra, the triangle, square, and pentagon, that combine to comprise the five platonic solids themselves on which the Atlantean society is founded and based. Atlantean architecture embraces an expanding fractal pattern elaborating outward from a single core into an infinitely bifurcating complexity asymptote. Because the purpose is to maximize space and depth by opening the walls up to create a tensegrity for the building's structural integrity, the walls themselves are a crystalline glass-like substance that can vary its degree of opacity. Along the edges between the walls, ceilings, and floors run fiber optics, that can illuminate these glass-like walls any color. A Day in the Life of an Atlantean Citizen Food Because the city of New Jerusalem is in paradise, we may base our ideas upon it, yet may never fully achieve its ideals down here on the terrestrial plains below. Thus we know only of the foods of Eden that they resemble enormous gems, emeralds, rubies, diamonds, jewels, etc., that their flavor is that of intoxicating perfumes, and that their substance is meant to feed our knowledge, our mental awareness, our brains themselves. Some have called the food eaten in and outside of Eden in Enoch the so-called New Jerusalem of resurrected pre-diluvial Atlantis, Amrita, Zro, the Shemana, Mufkuts, Soma, Lotus, Muscari, Ayahuasca, or marijuana oil. All the natural substances and all their chemical compounds are food for the minds of those willing to utilize them. There is no single right method of eating or maintaining health that is universally applicable to all and everyone. Some have hypothesized of the aesthetic ideals of Atlantis 
that they were not art for art's sake, but were harnessed into the employment of the state. This much is as true for their food as well, that it was not meant to feed the body, but to feed the mind. Like art that is eye-catching, the mind's eye is like a mouth that eats, that ingests and consumes stimuli both real and imaginary. We are each attracted to eat, dress, speak, think, and act as unique individuals. No two of us with exactly identical tastes and style. We say thus of the food in Atlantis or Paradise that it is widely enough variant to provide unending recombinations. A Day in the Life of an Atlantean Citizen Communication The edges of the walls, ceilings, and floors of all the buildings in Atlantis, Enoch, and New Jerusalem are wired with fiber optics that allow any wall of any room in any building to serve as a crystalline view screen. The people who live in this city in paradise now are the minds who outlive the bodies of those who died there when the flood destroyed it on the earthly plane. Thus, all communication between all these beings is telepathic because they are minds alone and do not possess bodies as we think of them now, but rather auras instead, or malleable energy fields they control and can reshape at will. Such is the true naked nature of the mind in paradise, a state of innocent grace. Because all the people living in Atlantis are only mind beings, without bodies of flesh, blood, bone, organs, etc., and because thus all their communication is telepathic, all communications also occur instantaneously. This is allowed by the nature of the monetary currency in Atlantis, being ZPE, a form of faster-than-light energy field that can be pulsed to contain coded messages of information. Because this communication can occur before the event itself has been seen to have fully taken place, it allows a degree of precognizance and pre-recognition of possible, likely future outcomes. Although there is instant communication between individual minds, there is not a single omnisentient hive mind comprised of all the minds of all the Atlanteans combined. Instead, there is utter freedom for the mind to travel anywhere, to observe and discern any real thing, and to learn and understand all things it can imagine or desire to study. Although thoughts can be beamed directly from one mind being to another over any distance, each mind being is its own uniquely self-aware consciousness. A Day in the Life of an Atlantean Citizen Education As it is promised in the Atlantean Constitutions, education of a newborn in the telepathic methods of the order of death may begin no sooner than nine months following its conception, which we in the POD uphold to be the moment of the coming into being or creation of consciousness, self-aware life. However, because the citizens of Atlantis are mind beings only, without any form of body, it follows thus there cannot be such a thing as intellectual property rights, because the offspring of mind beings are ideas. New ideas become more complex systems of mental patterns until they form a fully functioning self-aware mind of their own. Thus, intellectual offspring, or ideas of any mind being, cannot be considered a good or service that can be commodified and owned. No more so is the child the slave of the parent than is any idea solely the product of its creator's own mind. 
the primary capstone of the order's telepathic education method is the philosophical goal of eradicating intellectual property rights on the grounds that all we can do is discover new truths within and about our reality that we all share. These truths that are all we can hold in our own minds while we continue to be alive were here before us, will be here after us, and are parts of the permanent invisible landscape. Our own minds are merely like netting through which the universal mind's thoughts pass like clouds. There is no pride over ownership, only recognition for a new discovery. All citizens of Atlantis up to and including the Pope of the Lemurian Church Bank are considered as like mere children beside God. Thus, all those who have entered paradise have come into it as like children, and so no one is exempt from learning more at any time. Even a newborn can teach and reveal much to even the oldest and most popular of popes. A Day in the Life of an Atlantean Citizen Infrastructure The immediacy of information availability the telepathic link shared by all Atlanteans also allows a mind being there to travel instantly to any point at any time, including even to various alternate future timelines as well. The entire net linking all minds in the past universes, the present universe, and the various potential future universes is itself an isomorphic knot that is self-connected and comprised of only one single long strand of figurative fiber, in this case a Calabi U diameter supersymmetric string, the same one connecting all the galactic black holes into the filaments resembling neurons in the universal brain. This single train of thought that interconnects all particles across all timelines to form a single omnisentient mind being is itself called the Universal Enochian Communication System. It is this network that allows the existence and commodification into packets of zero-point energy, ZPE, and which allows the continued functioning of the economy in Atlantis based thereon. The ECS, on all levels, is the information superhighway of thoughts inside the mind of God. It is useful to those of us who dwell within this universe for faster than light communication and travel. It is this ECS which comprises the roads, bridges, tunnels, dams, power plants, etc. of the infrastructure of Atlantis. So long as the universe can be composed as it is now, there will exist a place transfinite minds can gather to utilize the ECS in this way. The combination of all these minds into a single culture is the city of Atlantis. A Day in the Life of an Atlantean Citizen Utilities Because the universe itself acts as a power plant generating ZPE, and because the living mind is capable of serving as the conduit which can package and confine varying quantities of ZPE, and because ZPE allows the creation of wormholes mentally, and thus of mental manifestation of matter from nothingness, the ECS provides limitless free access to universal ZPE, which may be tapped into at any time in any location by anyone telepathic. This allows one to construct any implement, toy, tool, or weapon, any form of structure for housing or transportation, and any form of reality one wants to, to go anywhere in this universe or beyond, to do anything they can imagine to desire. Because the source of ZPE is entropy, 
And because entropy is caused by the passage of time decaying matter into energy, ZPE is limitless and free. However, this does not make the regulation of its use impossible. Records in a central location can be collected from various satellite node locations about who uses ZPE, where, when, why, how, etc. The same as one can form a core ideal by collecting information about it toward a central point from surrounding sources. The monitoring of ZPE use, by whom and why, etc., is a parallel issue besides ZPE being limitless free energy. Even though no one may be prevented from using ZPE in such a system, all uses of it would be recorded and could be used as evidence of criminal activity held against one by a jury of 13. Such is the economy and utilities industry of Atlantis, one and the same substance, ZPE, controlled by Psi. A Day in the Life of an Atlantean Citizen Transportation The soul or aura is its own vimana or vril energy merkaba. Once one has awakened to their true potential for telepathy and become a member of the Order of Death with rights as a citizen of Atlantis, one becomes aware of many facts previously invisible to them and learns many hidden truths. When one is daydreaming and one's mind wanders toward the stars, or when one is half asleep and staring into space, one is liberating one's mind to travel to any location in the universe at any place in space or time. This is accomplished easily enough, however following this initial intuition with deduction, we can narrow down the unlikely to arrive at only the most probable conditions for reality in our target location. By studying this method, we can strengthen our bonds to realities unknown to many, but accessible to all. The mind can disappear from one place and reappear in another instantaneously. The mind itself is the vessel inside which the mind's eye travels. When we change the focus of our mind's eye, we change the content and context of what is on our own minds. We change the surrounding reality around ourselves using perception. Likewise is the reality surrounding ourselves ever-changing when we are being moved along inside a vehicle. The mind can be like a loose-knit netting through which ZPE passes like clouds, but it can also be like a firm sail caught and pushed ahead by the same motion of wind in the air. The tension of one's concentration is determined by one's focus. A Day in the Life of an Atlantean Citizen Professions Because all mind beings alive in Atlantis, as well as all others in the Order, besides those who have entered or live in Paradise, are all equally infinite in their potential capacity, for telepathic education and learning all there is to know, no one can be said to be smarter or more psychic than anyone else in Atlantis. Everyone knows best what they must in order to be able to survive best through any given situation. All other knowledge is secondary. Having become well-read is irrelevant in a culture based on all knowledge being shared by all individuals equally. The study of Moby Dick or the Bible will not advance you in importance in the ranks of Atlantean society. Because the ability to manifest matter using mind alone is the cornerstone of the Lemurian Church Bank's currency of economy, the method of progressing in importance in such a society is by acquiring the rights to more and more ZPE in order to construct on the largest scale possible 
the best forms of manifestation to serve the greatest number of living beings. Thus, the only way to fail in such a society is to opt out and choose to not manifest anything positive or beneficial to oneself or others. Or worse, to intentionally generate self-destructive matter. Because ZPE is not self-regulating for applying morality to its use, so it falls to others to regulate when a crime has been committed. Because we are all free in heaven to do anything we wish, crimes are allowed to be committed because they can only be punished afterwards. Thus, there are those whose job it is to do good for such a premised society and those pitted to do evil against it. A Day in the Life of an Atlantean Citizen Voting Another activity that can take place on a daily basis in the life of any Atlantean citizen involves participation in psychic government, so-called Atlantean democracy. There are constantly elections being held among groups in various areas that non-psychics remain unaware of, but that are invisibly veiled to telepaths who can see through lies and across vast distances. Such elections are simply democratic group choices resulting from various campaign platforms presented by differing points of view on any issue under debate or that it is a topic of even casual discussion. For example, consider that for a non-psychic it would be impossible for a man in an office building in New York City to know the private details of a discussion in a closed meeting in an opposing company's office building in Hong Kong. Whether their motive is for good or bad use of such information, telepathy allows both the group meeting in Japan and the man in the U.S. to know what each other know instantly, even in different time zones. Because telepathy, psi over ZPE, is a prerequisite for membership in the order of death or citizenship in Atlantis, this much is taken for granted among those of us who are telepathic. The premise of Atlantean democracy is for those who know best to be given the largest number of public votes by everyone involved, and to avoid ever having a single dictator or a state run only by any small, secretive cabal. A dictator arises only when one person knows best, and a cabal or conspiracy arises when a small, secretive group seeks to consolidate power among fewer and fewer hands. Once one is caught in a cabal, only the quest for your own dictatorship can follow. However, Atlantean democracy allows a way to avoid this trap, and for the most number to prosper from doing so by remaining open and honest at all times, and avoiding corruption and the temptations toward graft and bribery. When a man with vital news in New York can sway the vote of a secret group of businessmen in Japan instantly, without any prior knowledge of their group even existing, then we can be secure in a working system of psychic government where only those with the best insights determine the campaign platforms presented as options to solve the issues under discussion by any group, anywhere, even autonomously. A Day in the Life of an Atlantean Citizen Banking Another daily business, besides participating in the decision-making processes of all groups to which your expertise could allow you entrance is participating in the economy. 
Just as today bank buildings offer the service of withdrawing and depositing money, presently we use bills of credit, but the whole concept of money is wampum, a symbol for value that has no intrinsic value qualities about itself. So too in Atlantis, where instead of paper cash, gold coins, or even oil commodities, they have substituted ZPE, the fifth element force of tachyons. However, in Atlantis, when you deposit their currency, you are diminishing the free market total of an energy commodity, and when you withdraw from them, you are increasing it. Thus, to limit universal entropy, lending rates can be leveraged to decrease withdrawals and the liquidity of their form of capital. Likewise, to increase universal entropy, lending rates can be decreased to encourage stimulus spending, thus generating excess energy entering the continuum of currency. Banking is, however, only one way of spending one's money, or in this case the esoteric energy of time itself, in any free market economy. It is not even requisite one has an account with any bank in a free society. A society based on free energy should be nothing if not an advocate for individual liberties, rights, and sovereignty. Ideally, the church bank system of Lemuria would not even exist. The purpose of banks is to rob the free market of liquid capital. However, in any system where spending is monitored, banks will exist as moral accountants. A Day in the Life of an Atlantean Citizen Stores Another method of exchanging currency in this case, ZPE, besides depositing it into savings in a bank vault, is to exchange it for a good or service from a merchant store. When one participates in the free, non-taxed, and not-on-loan exchange of finance, one is accomplishing the improvement of the liquid capital of the free market economy in this case the energy level of the whole universe. When you use ZPE as currency, as financial capital, or as wampum, a token exchange system, etc., you are taking some of your own energy and contributing it to someone else or a group of others, and in exchange they are giving you back an equal amount of energy, only in another form. Just as they can take your energy and expend it however they want following the exchange, so too would one only exchange their own energy for some form or function they needed that energy to be in that they could not accomplish for themselves. This need for others, their expertise and input, is an innate trait of consciousness. It necessitates democracy and, in turn, is necessitated by the nature of this mental micro-within-macrocosm. Just as the individual's mind works, creating a memory castle to compartmentalize and rationalize its various recollections and sensory stimulus data, so too does the universal mind operate, and we ourselves are the compartments in which God stores some knowledge here, others there. We not only know best what is needed most for our own survival, we also know those who can best help us in our course along the way. When we exchange information, energy, thoughts, or ZPE with these others, we enliven the entire economic continuum of energy in the universe. A Day in the Life of an Atlantean Citizen Fashions Although discussed slightly before, the concept of clothing in heaven is not the same as the concept of clothing on earth as we think of it now. When a mind being who has no body speaks of clothing, 
they mean the body into which they inhabit themselves. Thus, in one season, one sort of physical body might be in fashion, while in the next, another. However, the seasons of souls last much longer than those of we mere mortals who yet sleep. Thus, if we consider that here on our planet, empires rise and fall over the course of thousands of years, we can see how these arise, peak, and deteriorate from within due to the seasonal changing of their native climates over the seasons. Thus, a season for the soul whose mind dwells in Atlantis is three eons, each of two thousand years. Thus, for our planet, due to its 23.5 degree angle of inclination from its tidally locked moon, every six thousand years, the season progresses through one of four weather patterns per hemisphere. Obviously, when it is winter in the south, it is summer in the north, and vice versa, etc. Thus we see that, even over the longest time spans we mortals could imagine, fashions change with the seasonal weather. The flesh and clothing styles of we mortals, who their minds inhabit, may change thousands, even millions of times, per one such season of these souls. But we are only their ideas, while theirs are the minds who invent our own thoughts. A Day in the Life of an Atlantean Citizen Leisure Recreational activities in such a world, where ZPE is only regulated after the fact, where free will can reign in total control over whole s large sections of our shared material universe, etc., largely revolve around more purely aesthetic art for art's sake, pursuits of creativity such as satire and statistics. Nature is seen as a place to experiment with the existing, to remix it from one place with alike kinds from somewhere else, and to see what yields the most pleasing result. Bonsai botany trims the asymptotically bifurcating branches of the infinite, possible future realities in the so-called garden of forking paths, such that the shape taken by each root, the trunk, every branch, stick, stem, twig, and leaf is perfectly in harmonic accord with the plans of the one whose hands hold the pruning knife. Just so, the exertion of energy for its own sake is seen among psychics as resulting from the boredom of the sex drive. When the sex drive is redirected into mental pursuits, it ceases to be blocked in a lower, more physically driven chakra center. In general, because in such a society, work, taxes, voting, and banking would all be voluntary and could be opted out of entirely if one so chose, there is a greater quality of leisure time than work-related or task-specific spending of time. In this sense, because being free means having excess free time, the mind beings of Atlantis are more focused on inspiring creativity in themselves and others than in pursuing any particular sport or game. It is seen as far better to participate in political choices than to play lesser political games. A Day in the Life of an Atlantean Citizen Family Because the role of slavery exists now, it can be argued that it does so only so long as it must do so, and that, though we may want to wish it away, we must work to phase its practice out in our modern day. The form of slavery practiced now, in the 21st century AD, is psychic slavery, mental bondage, the crushing belief that you must obey even what seems like failure, doom, and suicide, only because no one else is proposing any better alternative ideas. 
This occurs when one person is a psychic slave of another. One person is less intellectual or less assertive with their charisma, etc., and so they become the submissive side of the equation, while the other is more so in all the traits and qualities the former is less so in, and they form the dominant side of the equation. Thus, some psychics use their psychic power to manipulate less assertive or intelligent fellow psychics that they are themselves, in fact, not actually psychic at all. By believing yourself less than you can be, let alone less than you really are, you are agreeing to a philosophy of self-defeat. All of us are equally gifted and able to use our minds to express ourselves. Not all of us are able or willing to admit that to themselves, and so some become subservient by nature and fall prey to less morally scrupulous perpetrators of subliminal manipulation. We, in the Pythagorean segment of the population of Atlantis, the so-called order of death, believe the opposite of slavery is family's chief value. To instill rugged individualism and a sense of innate liberty are considered chief roles in the home life of all Atlantean citizens.